Although everything around us might seem still, there is something happening beneath our feet that you probably wouldn't expect. The ground is deforming, not just here in Chicago, but in many cities worldwide. Today, I will reveal why this happens and what we can do about it, something that could also disrupt the future of clean energy. I am an engineer, and my work focuses on the subsurface, the world beneath our feet. I was born and raised in Italy, and as all Italian kids, I spent years in high school studying the Divine Comedy by the famous poet Dante Alighieri. As I read Dante's masterpiece, I was always fascinated by his description of hell, meaning the place below. Hell was described to be located underground, beneath our feet. And at the entrance of hell, there was an inscription that read, Lasciate ogni speranza voi che entrate. Abandon all hope, you who enter here. Well, before Dante, ancient civilizations also considered the subsurface as a place devoid of good. However, if you think about it, the subsurface has always greatly supported our lives. In prehistoric times, we used underground caves to protect ourselves from threats. And later in history, we increasingly used the underground as a resource, building intricate networks of infrastructure below the surface. To give an example, Chicago is full of underground infrastructure. Underground parking garages, tunnels, building basements, and actual buildings, to name a few. Right now, we are in an underground theater, and I would bet many of you spent at least part of our journey here traveling underground. This is because the subsurface plays a key role in our lives. It is much more than what we may think. Now, the reason why I'm telling you all this is that the infrastructure we have built underground contains plenty of heat sources. We humans produce heat when we move. Most lighting systems underground also generate heat when they operate, and so do cars and trains when they break. As a result, many underground environments have become very hot. And this is the case, for instance, for the metro system in New York City, as shown by these two covers of The New Yorker from 1995 and 2017. This phenomenon also affects the London Tube, where underground temperatures can be as high as the maximum historical temperatures measured above the ground, even in very hot cities across the world. In fact, people who use public transport underground complain about this a lot. And the fun fact is that among the myriads of comments you can find online about the extreme temperatures underground, for instance, you can read that the Baker line feels like a stairway to hell with how hot it is although it seems to have great connections. <laughs> now, jokes apart, heat is unfortunately one thing it does very well. It spreads. And so, over the past centuries, much of the heat generated by our underground infrastructure has leaked into the ground, creating subsurface urban heat islands, essentially an underground climate change. This brings multiple problems. First, underground climate change is a public comfort and health issue because temperatures underground can be so high that people traveling there can suffer from heat-induced illnesses. Second, underground climate change also represents a transportation infrastructure issue because it can cause an accelerated aging of railway infrastructure on top of operational issues that can force trains to slow down or even stop with significant costs associated with delays every year. Third, Underground climate change is a renowned environmental problem because rising ground temperatures can affect subsurface ecosystems. Finally, there is a fourth major issue brought by underground climate change. Before I told you that my work is centered on the subsurface, what I didn't tell you, though, is that I am particularly interested in the properties of soils, rocks, and concrete. In other words, the backbone of the subsurface and the built environment. Now listen carefully. As you might expect, when you heat up concrete, rocks, and some soils, they expand. However, counterintuitively, when you heat up many other soils, they contract, they shrink upon heating. 
And in general, soils, rocks, and concrete are critically sensitive to temperature variations. So when I first learned about underground climate change, I immediately asked myself, how large are the ground deformations caused by underground climate change? And can they affect the civil infrastructure supporting our cities? Let me show you what my collaborators and I discovered. As a part of this work, we decided to investigate seemingly for the first time the influence of rising ground temperatures on civil infrastructure. We did this by deploying a myriad of wireless temperature sensors in the Chicago Loop District, turning it into a giant living lab. We installed sensors below the ground and above it. And what we found out is that Chicago, like many other cities, suffers from an underground climate change. As a result of this phenomenon, the ground is warming up. As you can see from these results, that basically give you the temperature in the ground beneath Chicago. As the ground warms, it undergoes deformations, which can be expansive and contractive. Per se, these deformations develop slowly, but continuously over time. And the problem is that none of our buildings were designed to handle them. More importantly, these deformations can be large enough that they can affect the durability of the civil infrastructure supporting our cities, for instance, through cracking. So cities need to act fast to mitigate underground climate change. Now, how can we do this? Before giving you a solution, let me recap the situation. On the one hand, the urban underground contains massive amounts of waste heat. And on top of this waste heat, the urban underground also contains geothermal heat, which is the most abundant renewable we have after solar energy, which directly comes from the Earth's core. On the other hand, the urban surface presents tremendous thermal energy needs in buildings. So if we were able to transfer heat from the subsurface to the surface, we could simultaneously mitigate underground climate change and meet the tremendous thermal energy needs that we have in buildings. The exciting thing is that we can do this today, not tomorrow, through shallow geothermal technologies or geo-exchange systems. Basically, technologies that move heat from where it's not needed to where it is. Let me tell you more. For decades, geo-exchange systems have consisted of geothermal boreholes, basically holes drilled into the ground that integrate plastic pipes with a heat current fluid such as water, circulating into them to transfer heat with the ground for two traditional applications, space heating and cooling and hot water production. Now, geothermal boreholes are certainly an option to mitigate underground climate change and meet our building thermal energy needs. However, over the past 10 years, my collaborators and I have dedicated significant efforts in developing the scientific and engineering knowledge in support of a groundbreaking alternative to geothermal boreholes. Today, I am excited to be here to share this powerful innovation with you called geothermal structures or energy geostructures. Basically, all kinds of underground constructions you can think of turned into clean thermal energy sources. Here is what energy geostructures look like in new constructions. As you can see from this photo that basically shows you a typical reinforcing cage of a building foundation, energy geostructures transform building foundations into clean thermal energy sources by integrating the same plastic pipes that we have embedded for decades in geothermal boreholes for the ultimate aim to exchange heat with the ground. The same principle applies to this foundation, to this wall, to this component of an underground tunnel, and to this lab. Now, since energy geostructures transform underground constructions that we would build in any case to support our cities into clean thermal energy sources, as you can imagine, they're increasingly applied worldwide. However, let me return to what I noted earlier. Traditional energy geostructures were only applicable to new constructions, not existing ones. So what about all the existing buildings and infrastructures that characterize Chicago and other cities in developed countries worldwide, which are obviously not going to be replaced anytime soon, and constitute approximately 98% of the constructions that we have around us. 
I'm proud to say that I have invented a technology, first of its kind, that has made energy just structures applicable to all kinds of existing constructions. Here it is. This technology can transform any underground space into a clean thermal energy source, into an energy just structure. It is a modular, thin, and flexible technology made of aluminum alloy that can be installed in any underground space that currently rejects heat from the ground. Easy to install and maintain, and providing plenty of opportunities to be customizable in underground parking garages, tunnels, and underground malls providing also plenty of communication opportunities. By exchanging heat with the ground surrounding these underground spaces and or the air circulating in these underground spaces, this technology forms a closed loop circuit working with heat pumps with the ultimate aim to provide renewable heating and cooling to any building you can think of. And at the same time, this technology promises to decarbonize entire urban communities. This is the world first geothermal panel. So by now, I hope it's clear how, in much the same way, solar panels turn building facades and roofs into clean energy sources. These geothermal panels transform underground spaces into clean thermal energy sources, as we did in this case and in this case. Now, here are a few further metrics about this technology. First, one geothermal panel covers a surface area of one square meter and can meet approximately the thermal energy needs of 10 square meters in most existing buildings at any one time. This basically means that about 10 geothermal panels are needed to cover the thermal energy needs of a typical one bed, one bath apartment. Second, the operation of one geothermal panel allows to save approximately 60 kilograms of CO2 every year which corresponds to the amount of CO2 absorbed by two trees every year. So basically, installing one geothermal panel is equivalent to planting two trees. Third, these geothermal panels can meet up to 100% of the thermal energy needs of buildings. More importantly, they can do so by harnessing renewable geothermal heat and the waste heat that is driving underground climate change, representing the cure for this phenomenon. To conclude, Dante Alighieri and many others have long imagined that the subsurface hosted hell. And in our own way, we have turned that into a reality. However, the subsurface not only hides the threat of underground climate change, it also provides the massive opportunity to harness substantial amounts of clean thermal energy for our buildings. This can be done through energy geostructures another set of technologies readily available to tackle our warming world. So unlike Dante, I consider the subsurface as a land of untapped potential and opportunities. In fact, dare I say, the subsurface is a hell of a place. <laughs> Thank you.